Mars, we're coming. This online exclamation of technology billionaire Elon Musk announced on the social network Twitter on December 10th after the first real and almost successful test flight of Starship, the most powerful rocket in human history designed so far, seems to mark the beginning of a fundamentally new stage in the second space race, catalyzed by private sector innovation. As countries and companies gradually begin to adapt to the global coronavirus pandemic, the upcoming 2021 is about to be a turning point for flights beyond the Earth's atmosphere. In the next 12 months, we'll probably witness how the low Earth orbit is gradually more privatized. It'll begin to saturate with more and more devices of new and new young companies that build light rockets only with the support of private capital. The big players in the sector and government agencies, in turn, will gradually reorient to larger and bolder ventures aimed at the Moon and deep space beyond it, Mars, Venus, and the asteroid belt. However, for this to happen in practice, they'll need new, even more powerful missiles. 2021 should give them four, maybe even five of them. StarsX of SpaceX, SLS of NASA, Vulcan of ULA, Russia's Angara 5A, and possibly New Glenn of Blue Origin, the space company of the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos. Musk's Destroyer The big hit is undoubtedly the Starship, whose development and evolution can be followed almost in real time on social networks. In the last month, the prototype of Elon Musk's super-heavy spacecraft has successfully risen to a height of 12.5 kilometers, and in the coming months will almost certainly cross the conditional 100-kilometer barrier called the Pocket Line, which formally separates us from space. Together with its super-heavy rocket, it'll be twice as powerful as the legendary Saturn V lunar rocket, will be able to launch at least 100 tons of payload, and one day may be able to transport up to 100 astronauts to Mars. If things go well for SpaceX, next year the Starship prototype will eventually reach Earth orbit, after which it'll try to land, protected by a heat shield, eventually becoming the third improved reusable spacecraft after the American space shuttles and their Soviet clone, Buran. If all this happens in practice, Musk's space company will move on to the next phase of its overambitious endeavor and will begin experimenting with orbital refueling. This is something that no one has done before. The development of this technology is key to deep space missions, as all existing rockets use up almost all of their tanks just to overcome Earth's gravity and reach low orbit. SpaceX will also begin preparations for an experimental landing on the Moon and for possibly sending the first test missions to Mars in 2022. The SET 2021 will be decisive for the American space agency NASA. Next year, the final assembly of its super-heavy and super-expensive SLS launch vehicle, which is the official successor to Saturn V and should be the backbone of the new manned lunar program Artemis, should be completed. The agency's management will have to demonstrate clearly that the tens of billions of dollars poured into it have not gone to waste. At the end of the year, NASA plans the premier SLS flight to launch the Orion capsule into orbit to the moon without a crew and then test the return of the spacecraft and its re-entry into Earth's atmosphere after gaining lunar speed. The U.S. Space Agency will have to decide what to do with the development of the lunar landing module and choose which of the companies in the competition will continue. In addition, in the spring, NASA will test the first technological demonstrator of a Martian drone helicopter called Ingenuity, and in the fall, together with the European Space Agency ESA, should launch the future most powerful orbital telescope, James Webb, which will be a landmark event in the field of astro. Goodbye Monopoly a fateful 2021 awaits established space mastodons, who for decades have relied on billions of government contracts to prosper. At the moment, their oligopoly is seriously threatened by SpaceX's reusable rockets and the growing swarm of space startups that are about to bring the orbital business into the world of the market economy. To this end, the until recently dominant joint venture United Launch Alliance (ULA), which is a joint venture of the giants Boeing and Lockheed Martin, will try to launch its new modular rocket Vulcan. It remains to be seen whether it will be able to compete with SpaceX's already established Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, as well as whether, like them, it will be able to integrate technology for at least partial reusability. The European space giant Ariane Group will also take part in the battle for survival, trying to complete its modular rocket Ariane 6. 
And although it is a more price-oriented variant of the currently used modification Ariane 5, it'll hardly be able to compete with SpaceX reusable rockets, let alone Starship in the near future. Ariane Group will eventually try to test a prototype of Themis, a reusable rocket copied from SpaceX's Falcon 9. In parallel, the European Space Agency will begin development of a reusable robotic orbital aircraft called the Space Rider, which will mimic the use of the U.S. military spacecraft X-37. China, for its part, plans to begin construction of its first 60-ton modular space station, which will resemble Russia's Mir in scale. Its central segment is scheduled to be launched this year. It'll house the housing section for three astronauts, life support systems, the energy component, and the engines to stabilize the station's trajectory and compensate for the Earth's gravity. The Chinese orbital complex is expected to operate for at least 10 years after being completed in 2022 or 2023. China's regional rival, India, also has its own space ambitions. Over the next 12 months, the New Delhi government will make every effort to launch the final prototype of its manned spacecraft, but so far without a crew. The world's most populous country hopes to soon become the fourth space power to send people into orbit, after Russia, the United States, and China. By joining the lunar program Artemis, Canada, for its part, hopes to become the second country after the United States to send its astronauts into deep space. However, this will happen at the earliest in 2023, when the Artemis II mission is scheduled, which includes a flight around the moon but without landing. In 2021, business and competition will begin to flourish in Earth orbit. Russia's space agency Roscosmos will say goodbye to its winning monopoly on transporting astronauts to the International Space Station ISS, which has been smashed by SpaceX and its new manned Crew Dragon capsule in recent months. Musk's company will continue to service the transportation of cargo to the orbital complex thanks to the updated version of the Cargo Dragon spacecraft. Boeing's CST-100 Starliner capsule, which will make a second unmanned test flight to the ISS in March, is also expected to return to the game. If, unlike in 2019, it's completed without anomalies, this will pave the way for the launch of the first experimental crew by the end of 2021. The coming year is also set to be a turning point for space tourism. In the coming months, the first private suborbital passengers of Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic and possibly Blue Origin with the New Shepard single-stage rocket are to fly. Axiom is on the verge of a giant breakthrough and will organize the first entirely private space expedition to the ISS in the fall, using SpaceX's Crew Dragon. On board will be not only private veteran astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria and Israeli military pilot Eitan Staibe, but most likely the actor Tom Cruise, who will make the first feature film in space. In the near future, Axiom plans to integrate private modules into the ISS, which will one day be separated as a separate space station. This will not be a precedent, even at the moment an experimental inflatable segment of the private space company Bigelow Aerospace is attached to the ISS. The fast and low-cost small and nano-satellite business, currently dominated by New Zealand startup Rocket Lab, is also set to become even more competitive. Next year, at least two more players are expected to join the battle of the Little Rockets, Firefly Aerospace and Astra, possibly Virgin Orbit with Launcher 1, which is launched by the modified Boeing 747 named Cosmic Girl. The startup Relativity Space, on the other hand, continues to raise hundreds of millions of dollars to develop the Terran 1 rocket, which will be printed almost entirely with huge 3D printers. Rocket Lab, for its part, should complete work on a modified version of the Electron rocket to become reusable as SpaceX's Falcon 9. The company is also developing a small third-stage rocket called the Proton, designed to fly beyond Earth's orbit, to the Moon and possibly to Venus in 2023. So soon, even deep space flights will not be reserved for the big ones in this industry.